The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks. How you doing? Daryl Martin here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And let's check out where the markets are. I get to your lunchtime market wrap. And let's see here. What do we got? We got the s and is currently up five points. We got the Russell is up almost five. We got the NASDAQ about 14 and the Dow up 24. Um, you know, miracles never cease. Fundamentals, yeah, you just got to follow the charts. So uh, we'll talk about the, some of the, the GDP number that came in here in a moment. We got copper right now. Copper is down about half, or actually up about half percent. We got gold is pretty flat uh, compared to yesterday's settlement. We'll go and we'll dive into some of these. Uh, maybe look at a few different ways to uh, trade various markets here. We got silver is currently up about 0 0.2, so pretty flat there in the metals. Natural gas also flat on the day. Oil up a mere 44 cents. Even with the oil inventory report, we'll pull that up and look at it. We got corn and soybeans. Corn is currently down just a couple points, about half percent. We got soybeans pretty flat, only a buck and a half. Let's check out our currency pairs. Currencies, right now we got the euro dollar is up 25 pips. We got, let's see, let me give her some of these old rollovers. We just rolled over everything, so I got some old stuff in there because I was watching the old and the new. All right. There we go. Okay, so we got the Aussie dollar is up 21. Pips pound dollar down 6. Dollar franc is down 24. Dollar CAD is currently down 10. We have the dollar yen down 13. And let's see here. We have the Aussie yen up 9. Euro yen up 14. Pound yen down 24. And the euro pound is up 22 pips on the day. Okay, so uh, let's see where things are at. Let's uh, do our quick, uh, you know, news review that we do each day. Knock that out. And had a few different um, announcements come out. Not ones that we were necessarily trading. And uh, just because, well, we'll talk about it. Uh, the oil one you could hop in on. But the other ones. And let's go ahead and pull up, uh, you know, we'll do Forks Factory. There's a lot of good calendars out there. This is one of many that I've seen. And... Uh, the only the only issue I have with Forex Factory, I like the site. The main issue is everybody hits the thing at the same time, and I mean I haven't tested it, you know, most recently just because I got tired of it. But it'll slow down, <laughs> really slow down when that live data comes out. And there's all sorts of you know feeds you can use for live news. There's Squawk, and you know there's you know there's just a, there's a lot of websites for it. But it, uh, usually it doesn't totally matter based on the way I trade now. Um, I used to be very, you know, trying to trade on the news number, but um, I've learned a lot more effective strategy uh, by using Nadex. And so on our news trading plan, we had a few things come out, and the big number, the main number, was the final GDP. So on final GDP here, I was starting to open up a chart. Let's see if I still got that one in progress or I got it open yet. Okay. Um we were looking at, you know, euro dollar, it's normal move. And so let me open up a euro dollar chart here. And I'll just put it on a five minute chart. Use default 24 7 just so I can see everything. And then I guess I'll just load up. We'll look at the spikes and everything, you know, with all that going on today. Maybe we'll check that out. And um, see where that puts us. Okay, so that ought to populate up there in just a second for you. And oh, I thought I thought I chose default twenty four seven. Let me choose it again. Okay, there we go. Get that done. And um, 
I usually have it set in there. I did an update on my uh, Ninja Trader. Uh, tip for you if you are a Ninja user um, is you can go in on the instruments and you can actually set them. So let me show you how to do this just in case, you know, you don't know. Um, go to in Tools Instrument Manager, nice little lesson of the day, and type in, say, you know, Euro Dollar. Then click on it, click Edit, and then right from the session template, you can hit Default 24-7. I just hit D twice, by the way. I click here, and it's D twice. Takes it right to it, click OK, click OK. Now going forward, I will never have to choose Default 24-7 on a Euro Dollar instrument again. It'll, it'll automatically be there. Um, so let's uh, let's look at this news announcement and yeah, let's get that deviation moved down here. There we go. Okay, and we'll go back on up, and then we will put this on one side, put this on the other. Makes it a little easier to see what we're looking at. Got core durable good orders at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll see, I also need to add global crosshairs there. And let me put a side note. Always wanting to improve little things. Makes it easier for you whenever you're you know trading just to I'll make side notes and come back to it. And that way I can set those defaults later. Okay. Um, so core durable good orders comes out at 8.30 in the morning, and that's on 6.25. So we'll go right on over here. Let's look at that. Also, final GDP came out as well. And we were looking at the trade, and I was like, you know, I, just, I didn't see enough consistency in the move for us to go, you know, all in on the trade. We did get a nice move out of it. A little bit of a surprise there, but we got a nice move. And if we go in and basically look at that move up to the high here, got about 34 pips. So basically could have worked out well for an iron condor. Sometimes the thing will move 70 or 80, but it's a final GDP. And so I've talked about this all week. You have your advanced GDP, which is like your first one, which usually has the largest move. Then you have your preliminary GDP, and then you have your final GDP. And so there's a lot of data already figured in. And the expectation that was going to be down 1.8%. Uh, and it was actually down 29 So that is really bad. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's it's horrible. But at the you know, final GDP, there's a lot that can go into that. There's a lot of news stories you can check out on it. But... Uh, Anyway, so you want to, you know, you want to be aware of it. You want to go into it. We can talk maybe more about that later in the show. I'll talk about, you know, the impact that has on everything. But, uh, you know, we go over and we look at the markets and we check them out. And, you know, they're like, well, what do you mean we had a bad GDP? <laughs> so that's why I'm always so big on I don't trade the news directly. Um, I more, I make a trading plan around the news uh, with the stats of the news. And so if we go over here and we look at the report that came out again this morning here at 830, you know, the market did, you know, it fell down. We got a nice, solid move, but it promptly just turned right back around. Um, and, I mean, it was already sort of, you know, it headed, headed down pretty fast, about 10 minutes there, just boom, got about 15-point drop there on the Russell, and then right on back up. And, uh, and then just went into sort of a chop mode here for the last, I mean, like really slow movement. But uh, anyways, that's GDP, and that's also why we didn't trade it. Okay, quarter over good orders, same thing. You know, nothing consistent there, especially when they're at the same time. Obviously, G final even even being final, it override that. We got durable goods and final GDP and all that fun stuff. Uh, the other thing that we had come out was oil. We talked about oil inventory, and so I'd like to uh, cover that one with you. So we get a chance here. We'll pull it up. We'll look at it. And I know it's really difficult. You don't really have to have all the volumes. It's just it lets you visual see where it took place. It's not a requirement. But, um, you know, if you're, uh, I know I guess the people that are, we've been talking about volume spikes and everything, and they're like, how do I trade those? And uh, volume spikes are pretty simple trade. Um, 
you just have to have, you know, the, the pieces line up, obviously, like any other trade. And, you know, these would have, let's see here, would, yeah, you would have got one of them. And um, what I do is when I get a volume spike, and just to show you, like, what is a volume spike, it's when the volume is double the volume on the volume bar before and after it. It's really not a complex algorithm there. And um, anyway, so that's all a volume spike is. So what do I do when I get a volume spike? How do I trade that? Well, what I'm looking for, and we'll just focus on the five minutes now to make it simple. Uh, but let's say I get a five-minute volume spike. I don't know that really until this bar is closed, right? That's when my little spike appears. So, because I got to have, you know, volume here. Like on this bar, I had, you know, 330 volume. On this bar, I had 2,237 volume. And by the way, this is on, I look at 6E when I'm trading FX. So if I'm trading spot FX, I'm actually looking at the futures Forex volume so I get accurate volume. Um, you don't want to use broker volume. You don't want to use MetaTrader volume. Um, you don't want to use spot forex volume. Spot forex volume basically is going to be the transactional size of uh, number of ticks that have happened during that specific volume bar. Um, if I go over here, look at this. So 238, 331, and 2200. That is definitely a volume spike. I mean, that is massive. I mean, that's more than double pretty much every bar before or after for the last hour, uh, except for like right there. Well, yeah, for the last hour. Um, okay, so I get a volume spike, five minutes. I know at this bar, close, that's when I know the spike happened. And so when I get the volume spike, when I get it below it, okay, then I'm expecting it to reverse. Pretty simple. And so I'm going to expect the market to do one of two things. I'm expecting it to either go up or I'm expecting it to go flat, Okay. So with that expectation in mind, what I do is if, if, okay, the market breaks the high there, they're going to buy an in the money binary. Ideally, not required, ideally I'm going to want a binary to be like below this low. So like at or below the low right there. So if the low of these two bars here, of the spike here, is 1.3635, then I'm going to want one that's lower than that. And so I'll buy that in the money binary as long as it expires greater than that price. And let's see here. I got a little mock indicator that we're working on. It's not done. Let's see here. Put this on. And it's not perfectly accurate, but what it does do is at least gives me a general idea. Um, I'm working on what we're working on is plotting this so that way eventually I can feed the data from the Natix platform directly into the chart. And so I'll show you what the strike would have been specifically on this contract and how we would have played it when we get back right after this. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Okay, so to go to a really easy just example, we're sort of focusing on this one right here. Um, you would have been looking for a strike at or below. So let's see. It says that they're lining up right there. Let's see what they really are. And it looks like we did have, this is pretty close, 36, 36. And we had, oh, 36, 36. Okay, so I guess it did line up. Um there, or 3635 maybe. Yeah, it's said 3635. It was actually 3636. But anyway, so uh, like I said, it's not perfect yet working on this L indicator. There can be like second lag there that can make it like one tick different. Um, but anyway, so we would have been looking to buy. We would have been looking to buy down here. Now, this is, you know, 40 minutes to go. That's only eight ticks away. Um, you know, that is possible. So it's still a, it's still a pretty decent distance, though. So uh, that would have, you know, it's pretty low volatility. So you might not have been able to find that exact spike right there. And so you have a couple choices. Um, and this will be more advanced. But the simple rule is just buy it in the money binary below it if you get the spike below it when the bar after the five minutes breaks above it. So just look at your volume before, after, breaks above it, buy. Pretty simple uh, strategy. Hopefully expires ideally in the money. The advantage of doing the in the money contract obviously is it's already in the money doesn't have to move if it just goes flat on you the second advantage 
is you have the ability to go in and um, you know get out of it, hit your trade so you can manage your risk a little more effectively. Uh, disadvantage is it may be further away. If there's low premium, it's hard, it can be harder to get a fill. So alternatives uh, is you know you could look at doing a double binary. Probably not the best one for this because we're not expecting a massive move. Other thing you can do is you could look at an at the money binary. Uh, the problem is I it may expire like right at that same point. And I mean, look right here. We look at you know what was the closing price? It was like thirty six thirty seven. I mean, within with the indicative calculation of settlement, who knows exactly where that thing landed? Uh, now, if you took off like twenty five thirty bucks, that'd be great. You just have the negative side of when it goes against you. How are you going to get out? You're just going to have to leave it there. If you're going to leave it there, then you're really tempted just to leave it alone. So that way you can have more profit, like get out at 95 or something at least. Uh, so it just it gets more challenging within at the money binary to manage it uh, with a stop. So that's why they're usually not my preference. Depends on the strategy. Usually not my preference. Um, other choices you could choose maybe a slightly out of the money. Okay. But then again, we don't expect a big move. So I don't like the out of the money. So I don't like the out of the money. The out of the money is good except for you're probably going to want to take profit after like 20 or 30 bucks which means that you know you sort of have that issue of a whole $50 risk. Because this trade right here, I mean, this, this strike would have went from like 85, 90, down to 50, probably down to literally 10, and then right on back up. And uh, so you're, it's a lot of stress. But it's a little easier if it's closer to a one-to-one -one risk reward. So you just, you got to learn how to play that issue. Like out of the money is going to be worse because it has to move and I don't expect it to move. In the money is going to be better because I can manage my risk, but it's going to be harder to get a strike filled. But there may be some updates on that, so we might get some more strikes, uh, which would help out a lot. And then at the money, pretty easy to get a fill most of the time, uh, but may uh, have to take profit a little sooner to really lock that gain in. These work a lot, so it probably would be okay. Just understand that you are going to be taking a little higher risk. Okay, so. If I was stuck with a choice on this, there's no binary. Either I have no trade, or I'm going to take the like at the money for somewhere around 50 bucks, and I'm going to go for about a 30 dollar profit. That is my preferential style. If one is not available. Just I'm taking a little more risk, and I don't have really any exit plan on that. Okay, so because it's defined risk. Uh, anyway, so it goes down, goes up. If you would have taken 20, 30 bucks, at the money would have been profitable. In the money, probably wouldn't have got filled. Um, out of the money, definitely would not have moved far enough to make any difference. So. Uh, really, at the money is the only one that would have worked. Now, what about like this five-minute one? We'll see. This one been, you know, it spiked up, got a spike to go short on the close of this bar, but it did not break the low, so I have no entry. Though that would have been a great potential butterfly, right? So, uh, but it didn't break the low, so I don't take the entry. All right, so it's got to break the high of that bar after the spike. So right there, it's got to break the low of that bar after the spike. And, that, and I'm talking five-minute bars, so that's just the first focus. So 10-minute, it's really going to break the high of, you know, the bar two bars after the spike on, you know, a buy side where the spike's below it, or it's got to break a one within two bars on the downside with the spike above it. But that's a that's a spike striker, and when we get back, I'll go into, we might have another one right here I'm looking at, so check that out right when we get back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, what we're looking at right here is uh, we're looking at the Russell. And we had a 10-minute and a 15-minute volume spike. What that means is 10-minute volume bar, if you combine the two uh, five minutes there, we're double the bars before and after, 15, double that. So remember, though, we had to have that 10 minutes after it for that spike to happen. We had to have that 15 minutes after for that spike to happen. Well, and this is where I was talking about that two-minute rule, or, or two bar, one bar, two bar rule. So like on a five-minute volume spike, you need one more five-minute bar to get the five-minute volume spike. On a 10-minute, you need two more, so one, two. On a 15-minute, you need three more, so one, two, and three. Whoops. So right there. So it would have needed to break the low of one of these two for you to take the short. You don't just take it, Okay. Um, now, there's other potential trades sitting here that you could do based on unexpected ranges, boomerang reversals, things like that. Um, you know, classic boomerangs. So those trades do line up. You did get a volume spike. That is beneficial. It's just it would have been nice to have actually had that volume spike, you know, happen at the right time. So that way you could have got, you know, like a classic, a P2, you know, boomerang and a spike striker boomerang all at the exact same time. Um but anyway, so all in the money trades, but that one right there is just not winding up. May move on up. It's pretty low volume day, uh, so that would also add. We can you know let's back up and look a little bit. I mean, ah, it's not too bad. That's pretty actually surprising. Um, 
It's actually not a horrible volume day at all, but uh, it's just been a slow day. I mean, looking at now, this is looking at five minute bars. Um, if I go and I down break it into tick based bars, we get a little bit different picture. But anyway, so on the five minute, if I go back now, if I get 10 minute, it's like every other, okay? Uh, of course, 15 minute every third. That's going to be pretty normal though because it's building up. But anyway, so I mean, average volume day, but uh, you know, not not a not a high volume day, not a low volume day. High volume day, nice trends. Low volume day, very flat. Um, just average volume, just sort of scooting along. Uh, we did, have, I mean, we had some movement, so I mean, that that definitely accounts for that volume. We had that drop, even though it didn't look like it. But I mean, we had a 14 point drop. It also went back up. About 20 points from there, it came back down. So with all that volume happening, even pre-market open was a nice clue. We did have some good volume. But uh, things are definitely lightening up now. As you're starting to see right here, we can tell we're really starting to more consistently, more and more and more, get underneath the expectation of volume, which would give you a little more confidence on a flat trade. But uh, just to focus specifically on one trading system, um, to let you see the, you know, the idea of the spike striker there, and how it's not really breaking the low and uh, ideally you get a little bit of momentum with it now the other concept is and I talk about this uh, is magnet pricing with the uh, volume spikes uh, now these are like your intraday magnets okay I mean obviously the magnets are to be used daily intraday etc the big magnets but sometimes those take a little longer those are for your big moves but just mini magnets uh, one thing you'll notice again and again on these volume spikes, and we'll go through a look at some of them. And I'm just going to drop off this real quick. Just trying to make everything fit on here. And I've done this before on the show, but usually what will happen is at some point here, we're going to get this. It's going to come right back up to the same price level. Okay? And, and we can even do it on these little bitty ones, but they're so small, it's almost pointless. Um, and let's see here, 5, 10, 15. So, yeah, so we'll probably get a magnet coming bottom back down, by the way, uh, to about 1156.5. So I would be surprised to see the market retrace back down to that. But uh, to not today. But um, anyways, looking on at the magnets, just so you can see these little bitty moves. I mean, this can be done like little, tr you know, trend collection trades, etc. cetera. But... Uh, Right here, it goes in, it goes up, it comes right back. Got the wrong one on there. Let me uh, add on. I know there's a way to do this. Somebody showed me the other day, but I forgot. So I'm just going to do the slow manual method. There we go. All right. So we get a spike. It goes up, comes on, back. And this happens like over and over and over again. See this? See all these little bitty magnet prices. Like so, when the spike happens, that spike high, spike low, and now some of them take longer. So you definitely want to be looking at out of the money trades. Ideally, you want at least an hour or two when doing it. But it comes down. This one, I mean, it took a while, but it did actually complete. Okay, um, right over there. Let's see. It took a, like a long time, but I took. Let's see. There we go. Right here. So that spike happened. Um, we got a spike here, moves down, and comes on back up. And you can just, I mean, these that's nighttime. Okay, that's nighttime volume spikes. So, um, nighttime traders might want to look up and pay attention to that. Um, let's see here, a little magnet volume. Now, these are, that's magnet volume spike trading. It's not the, the in the money, that's the out of the money strategy. Okay? The in the money strategy is the premium collection. And that's what we've been talking about the first half of the show. Um, this one, I mean, it basically spiked down, went up. I mean, it, was, it filled that gap instantly. There's only there's a few points in there. Let's see. Let's zoom it to get a little better view. Okay, so right here, spike was confirmed right there. And it's like 1.4 points. You're talking like a one out of the money trade. It's not very big. Probably would have been sort of hard to catch that. But if you're just doing like say next hour, I mean it did come back and it hit it. So obviously you want a little bit of room because you want to, you know, you want to compensate for bid ass spread, and you want some time and 
but I mean, even if you're just doing next hours, I mean, you're sort of seeing that it'll come up, spikes down, comes on back up. And some of these are huge, some of them are tiny. But um, that's Russell. You know, and the nice thing about Russell is it's easier to get strikes on because they're only a point wide, so as long as they're available, um, pretty simple. If we go over and look at uh, something like dollar yen, it has a lot of strikes, right? And it expires every hour at night, so obviously you can't trade the Russell at night. But um, on Nadex, I mean, you can trade the dailies, but it's not big enough. But I just want to point out the idea of that. So let's go look over. Let's look at dollar yen for nighttime. Um, all right, so if we're looking at, say, this is US yen. And one of the things I like about US yen is they have strikes every five ticks. So if I go over here and I add on strikes, and I'll say, okay, let's give me one every five. And uh, sorry, taking a minute for it to upload there. Just let you see what strikes are potentially available. Um, and again, it's not perfect yet, so working on that piece. But if we go in and we look at it, I mean, plenty of volume spikes, again, using 6J when I'm analyzing US yen. And let me move this up. All right, so if we go in and we'll get, say, okay, we got a volume spike confirmed, close that bar, next hour, moves up there, we get one below it. Right here, got confirmed. We sell, we have say next hour. There's a strike right there. So we got a strike here. I mean, we're, basically there are strikes, those little orange lines, and it's sort of hard to see. And um, if we go in, we got another one. And this is expecting a move back down. And it basically did it right away. Like as soon as it confirmed, it basically went down, but also next hour, it also filled. So which one would you have went for? Well, that's the that is the strike you would have went for. Just remember, you know what is the price you're going for? And it basically just kept rising. So that'd have been pretty hard to do. Let's see. Let's look at a couple of them. Okay, here's a spike reversal. So it goes down. Now it filled it immediately, but we look at it. Um, so after that spike happens, it drops, confirms, and then next hour, by the time it's confirmed and you're in, it fills up. So it takes a little practice, I'd say, to get used to this. But once you, if you start drawing the triangles of like when they happened and how they filled, that's really the easiest way. That's how I sort of taught myself to do it. And um, so, okay, volume spike, you know, right here on the 2:30 bar, boom, confirms, and you know, it goes back. And so we can just, you know, we can look at these again and again and again. But these are just little mini spikes. This is, I mean, this is scalping at its finest. Okay. Matter of ticks, and uh, usually looking at next hour out, you just gotta see what strikes are available, and you wanna get really that maximum price movement. And this is where you actually will start stepping in if you haven't done it yet, and you would actually start looking at the simulator. So you could say, what is my spike? Okay, what price do I expect it to move back to? So if we go over here to say present day right now, and we had a spike up, it already went back up and it already hit it. But let's say the, um, right there, that's the spike. So we're saying it's gonna come back down and hit the low of this spike. So 101.83 is a magnet. Then I could go in, and right now, I mean, it's so small, it won't make a difference, but just to show you how to do it, I go in and I can hit US yen, make that my selection, go down here to the US yen ones, and let's say I'm gonna sell, okay? And we'll just have everything selected. Get rid of all of our filters. Except for we just want, we'll say the next. And this is up to you, but let's just say the next, you know, couple hours. Okay? And then I'm gonna use the simulator. And in the simulator, I'm gonna say, okay, what was that price I said it was gonna come back to? Again, okay, it's already done it, but 101.83. And it's only at 101.85 right now. But going here, 101.83. Eight, three on the sell side. 
And then what it's going to tell me is, you know, what are the strikes that are available? Obviously, current hour I don't really need because I'm usually not going to use current hour. So I can drop that off. Okay, so next hour, if it moves 101.83, what would I make? Uh, you know, ah, that's the totally wrong one. Let's see. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. 101.83. Like that, we would not make that much money in two ticks. Um, okay, so 183, and I can start seeing what profit I'd make. It's like, hey, on this one that you sell for 80, you'd actually make 20 bucks. That's not bad. Um, I'm surprised we actually even make that much. But I mean, it's looking at the scanner, of the calculator, all that stuff. And that's for three o'clock with an hour and 15 minutes to go. Um, and that's the 10182, and it put it right about 57. So that's that's accurate. And uh, we're only talking about a couple ticks. So, I mean, that really might be my, my choice. Um, I have a couple choices. And this is the really cool thing about the simulator is it, it helps you see this. So right here, you can see that, like, it says, hey, you make $22. This one says you only make 17 But you're actually making more money on less risk. Okay, that's the 101.80. All right, now as more time passes, that's going to impact it more because it's a little further away, but you're only talking a couple ticks. So you're like, well, I can cut my risk in half and actually make a greater return if it does make that move. So you're going to have to make a choice now. <laughs> Here's that fun choice part comes in. Um, now, if you want to do an in, a double binary, and that's what I talked about earlier, is one of the choices, uh, a little more difficult. But if you want to do that, then you do have an in-the-money and an out-of-the-money that you could both do. So you can actually like sell... 1187 and sell the 1182. But that's more risk and a lot more management. If you want to show this one, I mean, you're talking 9 to $19 risk and uh, on a very small move, you know, making like, you know, $16. Doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, if you do 10 contracts, 100 contracts, I mean, you know, it adds up. 100 contracts could be a $1,600 profit, you know. Um, but you'd never probably even think of that if you were just looking at the platform. If you're just looking at US Yen, and notice how I'm looking at an intraday and a daily at the exact same time. So I got all of the 3 o'clock expirations right here for intradays and dailies lining up for me. And so I may have just been looking at 3 o'clock intradays and never even seen that there was a daily at 101.80 that had half the risk, only two ticks away. and actually made me a greater return, a greater yield on my investment, on my risk. Uh, and that's based on getting out at that price, okay? So, scanner, I mean, right there, just cut your risk in half on one trade and increase your profit margin on that trade as well. And you, like I said, you may have discounted it looking at the strikes on the platform as being too close, not close enough, etc. cetera. And uh, so that's, you know, one of the big reasons I love using the scanner. And it looks like it's, you know, it might come back down. We already basically hit it, so I wouldn't be real big on trying to magnet price this thing because we've already hit it once, but... Uh, we are at the expected range. Could it come down to 101.82 in the next hour and 20 minutes? I would certainly hope so. Um, so we're only talking like three or four ticks, right? All right, we'll check that out. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this 
prospectus and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Okay, so just sort of playing with this trade a little bit out of the box here, but I mean, it's sort of like a magnet. I mean, it is a magnet. It's just it's been playing at that level. So I guess you could even call that more of a magnet right there. Of that 101.83, 101.82 level. We're talking about, hey, can it get down to 101.80, right? If it can get down to 101.80, then we expect this thing to be priced somewhere in the ballpark of 75, about $75. Um, which means that you know, we would have put up on the trade somewhere between 10 and $12 risk. And if it was at 75 bucks, then you know, you'd make a decent profit on that. Um, if we sold it at, let's just say, you sold at 88, but I'm back at 75. Then you're making 13 on a $12 risk. That's a 100% return. You know, throw the fees out. I mean, basically, right about one to one. So, not a bad trade. Very low risk trade. Plenty of uh, volume. There's 120 uh, quoted contracts right now on it. Um, it is moving down. And, you know, there's one thing that's really important um, to be aware of 
is that it, the pricing is based on the underlying market on the Reuters, this is on FX, on the Reuters Forex data feed. So maybe you're using a MetaTrader 4 broker, not recommended. Maybe you're using, you know, um, FXCM or IQ Feed or Kinetic. Uh, you know, not sure who you use, but it's going to use the mid price of the last 25 non sequential quotes. So there actually has to be a different mid price quoted um, back to back. You can't have the same price 25 times in a row. Okay, so you could have it like once and then a different price and then once again, and that would count. But it's looking at those last 25 quotes, and so it's going to move really slow. And that's why we don't really see the indicative moving that much. But the reason I want to bring this up is the indicative matters at expiration. A lot of people are incorrectly under the assumption that the price of the binary change is based on the Nadex indicative index, and it does not. Okay? Um, I, I recently wrote an article on this, but um, the pricing is based on the actual underlying market. It's not based on the indicative, it's not based on the last 25 trades, et cetera, et cetera. It is based on the actual underlying market. So it's based on US yen, not index is indicative of US yen. Now settlement is going to be based on that. But think about that. Any option you trade is not going to be based on the V you know, the V swap method of calculation. It's not going to be based on like CME. They'll take the last 30 seconds, they'll take all the volume that happens in those last 30 seconds. They'll multiply that volume times the price that volume was traded at. They'll get that total number and add it together, and then they'll divide it by the total volume, and that's how they get settlement. But that's not what a CME S&P E-mini option price is based off of. That's what its settlement, it's in the money, out of the money, settlement is based on. The actual underlying market is going to be based on, but that's right, the, the, the derivative while open and trading is going to be based on the underlying market itself. Okay? Um, and that's it. So, you know, just don't, um, don't think that looking at those indicative charts is going to be the best thing for you. Okay? Uh, they're, they're a great quick reference. Um, I pay a lot of attention to them when I'm coming to that last 15 minutes <laughs> because sometimes I may end up having to hold. I don't plan on it, but sometimes I may. And so I know it's going to be more important. So it grows in its importance the closer I get to expiration. But the pricing, the open and closed pricing, is going to be based on the actual underlying market. So right now, we're actually busting up a little bit out of the expected range. We're doing so on exceeded volume. We've had higher volume for most of this period. And let's see here. And I mean, so now it's even cheaper if you were to get in. Um, and we're talking to 3 o'clock expiration. We have an hour, now an hour and two minutes, okay, until it expires. It's required to move down five ticks. The expected move is... What? what is our expected movement? It is about seven. So if it moves down five of those seven in the next hour, then the trade can be profitable. Make sure you adjust that price based on what you see in the scanner as what the relative price will be when it drops down. All right, y'all have a great day. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.